Now, let me take you back to 2010, about uh, this time of the year, uh, and a teenaged Irish jockey made a big splash with success at the Cheltenham Festival and then only a few weeks later at the finale meeting at Sandown. I knew I'd remember him because of his initials, A.P. Heskin, Adrian Heskin, uh, who's been uh, good enough to join us in the LOS studio this morning. A.P. Heskin, Adrian Heskin, morning. How are you? Good morning, yeah. Thanks. Uh, good to be here. Twelve years on from winning the cross-country uh, race, the Glen Farkless cross-country on a new story. Uh, everyone always says when you win a race or do something big at 17... Oh, it's a blur, I'm afraid. So what do you remember about the day? Yeah, um, unfortunately, it is a blur. Um, it was a massive for me to be coming over to the Cheltenham Festival. I didn't know I had was riding him until the Sunday, and Michael Horgan told me to pack your bags, you're going to Cheltenham, and uh, yeah, it was a, a whirlwind for a few days, and um, fantastic. Tell us about that, so give us a timeline there. So uh, on the Saturday before Cheltenham, you had no idea that uh, you, would, you were going to be riding there? No, and on the Sunday I rode for um, Michael in, uh, in Limerick and he said, after racing, pack your bags, you're going to Cheltenham, uh, you're going to ride a new story in the cross-country race. And, um, oh, I was... Yeah, what was your... What, what, you know, what was your had you any inkling? No, um, I had ridden him in a few amateur races beforehand and uh, he was a horse, he was quite quirky. I used to ride him a lot at home and... Um, never expected to be going to Cheltenham because I hadn't experienced enough and uh, Michael placed a lot of faith in me and um, it worked out great for both of us. Uh, knowing Michael a bit I bet he really relished saying hey pack your bags where am I going? Cheltenham. Yeah. I, uh, it must have been he must have had a big smile on his face when he broke the news. Oh he did and look uh, he placed a lot of faith in me at a very young age and uh, I'd be forever grateful for that. And then only a couple of weeks later Again with Michael Horrigan, Church Island won the Bet365 Gold Cup. Yeah, um, that's probably a race I can uh, remember a little All bit right. better. Tell us about that one then. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, look, I, I kind of knew I was going over to ride him in, in Sandown and uh, obviously I'd ridden him a lot at home. I think it was my first time riding him in a race. Um, and I remember getting to Sandown, Timmy Murphy walked the track with me. He had obviously worked for um, Mike back along and uh, he gave me a lot of pointers and... The horse himself, he was a fantastic jumper and just, it was one of them races, everything went right and uh, yeah, that was the day I really got to enjoy. And 12 years on, you're now amongst the most prominent riders because of this great association between you and Max McNeil and his family and friends. Yeah, exactly and uh, very lucky to be involved with Max and his family and Ian Turner as well. We've uh, a great relationship going but... Ian's the racing manager, isn't he? Ian, our racing manager, yeah, does a great job. But I suppose it came from the early part of my career, you know, working for Michael Horgan and getting them big opportunities kind of puts you in that position and you can be very fortunate who you meet and I'm lucky to be working with great people now. And if I just see Max at the races, if I held out my hands, I feel I was going to get warm from the enthusiasm he radiates. So that's me from 20 feet, 200 feet even. What, what, what's it like close up? Because that enthusiasm is really striking. Oh, it is. Like he's... Uh, it's clear to see his his passion for the sport is is huge, and um, he deserves every success. Like he enjoys every every little bit of it, and um, it's just to ride winners for him is great because, as you say, his enthusiasm it's infectious, really. And he seems to have got a lot of family and friends into it as well, so it's a, it's almost like a big party. Yeah, definitely. Like he involves everyone into it. You know, he loves bringing people racing. He owns quite a lot of horses. Um, with partners, you know, and that just that broadens the the enjoyment, and um, no, it's fantastic to be riding for them. And it's easy being a good winner. What what about when things don't necessarily go 100 percent right? In that regard, that the best I've ever dealt with. He understands the game so well. Like there's been, I've been riding for him four years. There's been occasions where we mightn't have got it right, and he's always positive, looking forward to the next one. And in terms of the the family and the friends, etc., are you very much sort of Part of, part of the party in Invertico. I'm not saying that you're, you're up till four in the morning or whatever uh, with the champagne, etc., but are you very much part of the, of the whole sort of operation? Yeah, definitely. I get that impression. Yeah. Um, look, he, tr he treats me as, as if I'm one of their own, you know. Um, we enjoy the good days together and uh, we take the bad days on the chin and it's just we're really enjoying it at the minute. 
And what you, you, you've talked uh, about his enthusiasm. Part of his enthusiasm is naming these horses so well. You're going to Huntingdon today to ride a horse called Butch. And that presumably, is Butch a mate of his? No, oh. he's um, actually named after a, a horse we all loved, the butcher said. Oh, right. Um, lovely horse. Uh, yeah, he's a lovely horse. And unfortunately, uh, he got a fall one day in um, Perth and we bought this horse around the same time. So we, we named this horse Butch in remembrance of him. So, so there, there's Butch. Uh, there's, there's been Portrush Ted in the past. Uh, there's been three under through five which, first of all, they, they get 10 out of 10 for managing to squeeze that expression into 18 uh, letters and spaces. It's featured, actually, in the Mail on Sunday today. There's a great story, isn't it? It was to do with his grandfather and taking part in the Open at Royal Port Rush. Yeah, um, and I think he was three under through five, so yeah. they, they aptly named the horse after. And what a horse. Yeah. Because um, always the worry is, isn't it, when you give a lovely name to a horse and it turns out to be a right so-and-so. Yeah, it could be a waste of a good name, yeah. but um, this lad's uh, fulfilling up to his potential of his name. Yeah. So um, um, three, three under through five, and it's the Brown Advisory at Cheltenham for him. Yeah, that's the plan. Here um, he is. Oh, yeah. good look round between your legs there. Where's everyone else? The answer is they weren't getting to you, were they? No. Um, look, he's a horse. He's ticked every box so far. He's only been beaten three times in his career. Um, he's excelled since going chasing and. Uh, he was very good this day in Warwick on a track that was probably a little bit sharp for him. Um, oh, really looking forward to him in, in a couple of weeks' time. Against Brave, Man, against Brave Man's game? Yeah, exactly. Look, uh, he's another one of the big, Irish, big English novices. Mm. So, um, yeah, look, we're looking forward to taking him on. It's, it's, it also, um, his, his presence in that race as opposed to any other race uh, leads me on very much to my next question. Because Paul Nichols has made no secret of it. In an ideal world, he'd like to run the horse in the National Hunt Chase, hasn't he? And d w which would ensure an amateur. But your owner has said, no, no, I'm sticking with Adrian. Um, so that, that must feel good. Yeah, definitely. Um, I suppose that's one aspect of it. Um, Max is showing loyalty to me by running the horse. But we believe as a team it's the right race for the horse. Um, he's, only, he's after winning two grade twos. Let him have his crack at a grade one and uh, see how we get on. But that leads me on to the next. So he's got horses with people like Paul Nichols, Alan King, all, all sorts of... How many, how many trainers is it all together? It's about a dozen, is it? Um, maybe eight trainers. Eight trainers. Yeah. So those eight trainers have probably got eight jockeys, maybe even more jockeys, but the owner has said, um, I want Adrian. So do you have to be a bit of a diplomat as well in, in dealing with the, the trainers and the, the jockeys who are regulars in those stables? Um, no, I think all at the start, I suppose, the trainers... A lot of trainers held their ground for their own jockeys, you know, and that's which is uh, understandable. Great to see the loyalty, you know. But um, Max's operation was just getting so big; he needed um, a bit of consistency on who was riding them. And um, luckily, he called on me, and it seems to be working very well. So there's not too much grumbling from you know when you're going to the weighing room, and there's not some of the other riders don't go quiet because they're they get a bit miffed about that. No, definitely not. They all understand uh, the situation, like. Harry Cobden, obviously, and Pauls, and Tom Cannon and Allens, they, they all know they're, they're my horses and the McNeil horses for me to ride. And you, you, you got involved with Max mm. in the first place um, but when, when a horse fell. Is that right? When, when the World's End fell at uh, Cheltenham? Yeah. Um, that's when you sort of, uh, your, your association became a little bit closer. Yeah, I suppose it did. Uh, I was lucky the first season I moved over here um, to the UK. I was riding for Tom George and luckily enough, Max had a very nice horse there called the World's End at the time. Um, I won a couple of races on him. He won the Albert Bartlett trial in Haydock. Then, unfortunately, he fell at the, the festival at the second last. I felt He'd he have won, I think, would he? he, he well, you're obviously going to say yes. Yeah, exactly, but... <laughs> Um, it was fantastic. He came out and won grade one then at entry, and I suppose that really secured um, our relationship then. And uh, did, did he say, hey, Adrian, I, I think I might have a jockey who can then ride the horses also, presumably ride on the gallops, etc., and things like that. Uh, did, did, was that. did he just shuffle up to you one day, or how did that all come about? Yeah, I suppose it was, it was probably in discussion for maybe six months um, before we confirmed everything, because I was obviously riding a lot for Tom as well at the time. And um, 
I got injured at the following entry and from the end of that then I started riding for Max predominantly. Now you, you mentioned injuries and you, you obviously know all the facts about your injuries but it strikes me that you've, you've had more than your fair share. Is that, is that a fair assessment? Yeah, I suppose I have. Yeah. Um, but look, I'm, I count myself lucky in one sense, you know, broken bone will always heal and when you've loyal people standing behind you it makes it an awful lot easier to rehab and coming back and having something to look forward to. You say injuries always heal, which obviously they do ultimately, but that right shoulder, you, didn't you keep dislocating your right shoulder? Yeah, that caused me a, a lot of strain over the last couple of years, two years. Um, and Possibly it was a struggle for me riding at the time, um, but uh, the rehab for having an operation on it, so you had a big op last year, is that right? I had a big operation in uh, June of last year and it was kind of six months of rehab so I missed the early part of this season but again I had people standing behind me that were pushing for me to get it done and um, I'm absolutely delighted with the results I got from it and feel 100% at the moment. And what struck me, you're, you're, you're actually just back from a, a whip ban and you've actually had to remodel your uh, whip action because of this, this shoulder that was giving you this all this jib? Yeah, th that's when it used to cause me problems. When I was in a finish, my shoulder used to come out. And um, as you say, I'm just back from whip band, but I've put an awful and lot of... And as a consequence, because it came out, you couldn't I I use the whip in the right way? Yeah, exactly. Or psychologically, you don't want to go to that um, extent for the fear of mm. dislocating. But uh, I've done a lot of work recently on um, rectifying that, so hopefully... And, and what was striking was that when you were given this, because um, it was a tot one of these tossing up cases, wasn't it? They actually gave you 18 with knocking six off. Yes. Is that right? And it was quite striking that the disciplinary panel actually li listened. M normally when you encounter a jockey after a disciplinary, when they've got a, a ban, they're stamping their feet and upset. But you'd actually made a, a, a rational case uh, your, uh, through your lawyer as well, Rory McNeese. And it was quite striking that the disciplinary committee said, look, Mr Heskin's trying quite hard on this, or very hard on this. He's remodelling his action. He's dealing with John Reed. He's at the, the John Oaksey house at Lambourne as well. So they, they, that was all very much taken into account. Yeah, definitely. I think um, to be HA um, listened to our case and they used their discretion and... Uh, yeah, look, we'll move move forward. From and now. is there more work you and John? Because John Reed, obviously one of the great flat racing jockeys, probably b slightly before your time, or do you remember him riding a bit? No, before my time. Before your time. <laughs> he's, sorry, John, you're not that old, I know, but uh, be, but he's very very young. Uh, but but he's obviously been very helpful, John Reed. Ah, uh, he has all that I, experience exactly. And um, during my rehab from my shoulder, John and um, all the staff in Oxy House, you know, it's a great place for us to have. So, what would John do specifically? Uh, just on the equisizer and working on it and uh, try, just help me out. Anyway. And why him? Because he's a wise old owl? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Oh, excellent. Well, talking of wise old owls brings me back to Michael Hurrigan, uh, who you've been associated one way or another practically throughout your life because your father was an owner, your parents were owners with Michael Hurrigan, is that right? Yeah, um, my father was involved in a, a village syndicate um, from my home village in Kilworth and they had a couple of horses in training with um, Michael back along, I suppose, when I was growing up. And um, The name Cool Dante rings a bell in the back of my head. Cool Dante, that was a horse yeah. my father owned, um, actually, uh, by himself. And um, yeah, I remember that horse winning the Listowel Festival one time. Uh, Say I was only that must have got your 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 juices going as far as your uh, your future as a jockey. Yeah, definitely, and um, like meeting jockeys like Paul Carberry riding for for my father at the time was great, and um, yeah, it was a natural progression when I wanted to move to a yard that Michael Horgan's was the place to go. And was Carberry a bit of a hero? Yeah, I suppose he, he was. Not a very uh, exclusive club, to be honest. You know, no, he's a hero for so many of us. Yeah, exactly. Uh, look, he was a fantastic rider. And your dad also bred. A horse that uh, this, if we'd been sitting this Sunday in this studio, if it had existed in 1999, there was a huge amount of interest in a horse called Nick Dundee that was a hot favourite for the RSA, which is now the brand advisory, isn't it? Yeah. And, and your dad bred it. Yeah. Um, look, he was a fantastic horse to have bred. I can only barely remember Nick Dundee racing, um, but... My father, he's always bred horses and kept horses going at home. So, so, so you, you are ho you're, you're horsey? 
yeah, look, we none of my parents rode or any of the rest of my family, but I was always fortunate. They knew I was keen to ride and always had ponies for me. And um, when it came to the time of pony racing, they drove me all around the country. So, so driving around doing that, do you ride a lot of winners in pony races? Yeah, I think I rode 25 or 30 right. winners. Um, and if you put your finger on the experience that you got from that pony racing, because it's obviously been big in Ireland for decades, pretty big in Britain now as well. What, 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 did, you, what did you take away from those pony races? I suppose it just um, makes you, your mind sharp being in around horses. Um, it's, uh, it's very competitive. And, um, yeah, betting? Oh, betting, yeah. It's, oh. uh, yeah, no, it's quite a big thing in Ireland. And, um, Ever get beat on a good thing? No, I used to ride too many good things. <laughs> uh, but it was a great experience, and it just makes you mentally sharp. And plenty of hurly-burly and uh, all that kind of stuff to just set you up. Yeah, exactly. Mm. And your era in pony racing, other, other names who, uh, who emerged alongside Adrian Heskin, who we'd know of now? Oh, Paul Townend, um, Emmett McNamara. Rachel uh, Blackwell was presumably... Yeah, yeah, Rachel. Um, so, no, very lucky. I came through it at a very good time. Excellent. Well, there's some fine names to have come through alongside. So you're looking week after next for a third Cheltenham Festival winner. We talked about a new story. You won the Albert Bartlett on Martello Tower as well, didn't you? And you might have won on the World's End. So um, what, 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 are your, what are your thoughts this year? Three under through five is clearly, I was going to call him a lively outsider, but he's not even that much of an outsider. No, exactly. He's, uh, he, he's, he's going there with his chance. Um, I have every confidence in the horse. Uh, he hasn't put a foot wrong yet this year, and we're delighted to be stepping him up to grade one company, and let's see what he can do. And the vibes from Nichols HQ. Have you, have you been down there to, to ride him? Yeah, I worked him um, last Thursday. Uh, he's in good form, and I'm going down to school him on Tuesday morning, which will be his last um, schooling session before Cheltenham, and uh, looking forward to that. Hopefully it goes well. So he'll be up and oven ready. And then I love Tritonic. Uh, he's one of my absolute favourite horses. He'll be going to the county hurdle, hopefully. Yeah, that's the plan. Um, he obviously won a very nice handicap in Ascot there before Christmas. He was brilliant, wasn't he, that day? He was fantastic. Um, Ascot really suits him a stiff two miles. They went to go gallop and he came home very strong. Um, Newbury then the Betfair hurdle. It was probably one of them cases I... Got it wrong, unfortunately. I rode him too handy and it didn't work out for us, but we'll go back to our usual usual tactics for Cheltenham. Excellent. And Kill Keely Briggs, will he be going? Yeah, Kill Teely Briggs. We're looking, Kill Teely, sorry. We're looking forward to stepping him up to three miles one in a race that means a lot to Max, the ultimate chase. Oh, well, that was his company? Yeah. Um, so it's a race he always Was his loved. company or is his company? Was. Was. Yeah, yeah. was. Um, so, yeah, look, it's a race he's, uh, he'd love to... Loves having runners in anyway. Excellent. Well, look, best of uh, luck uh, with all of those. Best wishes for the road to Cheltenham between now and Tuesday week. What about Butch at Huntingdon today? Be on Racing TV later on. Should we uh, should be looking out for a big run? Um, yeah, look, we think he's a lovely horse. Um, today's the start of his career, so just looking for a nice, nice first start. Excellent. Well, look, uh, a new story did indeed open up a, a new story for, for you as uh, you emerged in 2010. Uh, going to Cheltenham now as one of the, the, the principal riders uh, with these good rides as well. So best of luck uh, over the next uh, few days. And thanks very much indeed for joining us on LOS this morning. Thanks for having me. Lovely to see you. Lovely to see you.